Welcome to the Life Star Training and Education Center. My name is Todd and I am glad you are joining me today for a drug review of magnesium sulfate. That's one of those drugs that you seem to find in all sorts of different protocols, multi-purpose, does all sorts of things, will fix whatever is wrong with you. So let's look at magnesium. Magnesium sulfate is the topic of this drug review. Magnesium sulfate is a drug that comes in a variety of forms, but it usually to us on the ambulance looks like this, although it can come in bigger or smaller doses and different concentrations. So what is magnesium sulfate? It is an element. You can see it right here on the periodic table of elements. It is an alkaloid earth metal, and it occurs naturally in our body. Our body uses it in a lot of places to perform different functions. One really good way to get an idea of how important magnesium is in several of our body functions is to see where it appears in our pre-hospital protocols. And here I would give you a word of caution. If you don't work for Lifestar EMS, your protocols might be different. The first place at Lifestar where you'll find them in the protocols is under the cardiac arrest protocol on pages 12 through 14. And if you look right here, it says, if you have persistent VFib or pulseless VTAC, then give one to two grams of magnesium sulfate. This would be done either intraosseously through IO or intravenously. And you notice it's not a slow IV push. Because this is cardiac arrest, you can give the drug much more quickly than you would do in a patient that has a pulse. The next protocol that you would see magnesium sulfate is under asthma on pages 69 and 70. And here you'll see in cases of severe asthma, mag sulfate 2 grams slow IV push over 10 minutes is recommended. The third protocol you'll see it in is for eclampsia. If you have a patient that is experiencing eclampsia and has progressed from preeclampsia to actually actively seizing while they are in the last trimester, then we would give mag sulfate 2 grams IV over 5 minutes twice, which means a total of 4 grams over 10 minutes. If you don't have IV excess, that we would give 5 grams intramuscular in each buttock. We also have mag sulfate in our interfacility protocols on page 27. It's in the OB section, and it does mention both eclampsia and preeclampsia, but there's also an off-label use for mag sulfate as a tocolytic. Tocolytic means a drug which either slows down or pauses the muscular contractions associated with active labor. So if you have a woman in labor and the doctor wants to slow that labor down or even pause it, the doctor may order mag sulfate as an infusion and in this case the dosing can actually be pretty high. Check with the sending physician what kind of dosing you're going to run. There's also a use for mag sulfate that's not in the Lifestar protocols, but it is in some other agency protocols, and that's for uncontrolled atrial fibrillation, or AFib with rapid ventricular response. How does mag sulfate help somebody who's in an uncontrolled AFib? It's used primarily for rate control to bring that rate down from the maybe 150s and 160s down to a much more manageable 100, 110 rate per minute. Our medication math exercise for the day is how to give magnesium sulfate to our preeclampsic patient. And we have these bottles of mag sulfate on the ambulance. And we know from our protocol that the dose is to give four grams in 10 minutes as a loading dose. And then we need to take this patient to a labor and delivery capable hospital. So we are going to also run a maintenance dose of two grams per hour. And we want to do all of this by just mixing it up once. We don't want to be doing more math than we have to, and we're not going to mix up in different containers, one for the maintenance dose, one for the loading dose. So we're going to do this all in one. The math is going to be simple. You can press pause, you can back up, and you can think about things and then come back to this video. So this is going to be a low stress, easy medication math exercise. 
If you take a look at this bottle of mag sulfate, you see there are five grams in it. Five grams, but we're going to give four grams in 10 minutes, and then we have to continue giving two grams an hour. So five grams sounds like we might be pushing it a bit unless we're close. So just to play it safe, we're going to grab a second bottle of mag sulfate. So we have a total of 10 grams, and we need to put this into some sort of container full of fluid. So we're going to pick a nice medium-sized bag of D5W, so we're going to put it in this 250 milliliter bag. Once we draw up those 10 grams and put it in the 250 milliliters, the next thing we're going to want to know is what is the concentration of that medication. When we're looking at the concentration, sometimes you forget what am I supposed to divide, what goes on top, what goes on the bottom, but right here in the middle, that little slash, that is the mathematical symbol for division. So there's your reminder right there, grams per milliliter. In order to calculate your concentration, you divide the grams by the number of milliliters. So your grams are 10 grams in the top, and your milliliters are 250 milliliters. 10 divided by 250 is 0 0.04 grams per milliliter. So that's our concentration. The first formula that we're going to get to play with is the fluid over time formula, which goes like this. The amount to be infused expressed in milliliters, because in the end we have to get to milliliters per hour, times 60. That 60 is to convert the minutes into hours, and then over how much time you want to give this amount to be infused. In this case, we know that we want to give it in 10 minutes. So that one we already know the answer to 10 minutes. But what is the amount to be infused? That's another way of asking how many of these milliliters that have 0 0.04 grams does it take to make 4 grams? So if the question is how many of these 0 0.04 milliliters does it take to get to 4 grams? This unknown or variable x times 0 0.04 equals 4, so therefore 4 divided by 0 0.04 will give us this number. 4 divided by 0 0.04, ooh, that's ugly. Let's clean that up. 4 divided by 0 0.04 equals 100 milliliters. That is our amount to be infused, 100 milliliters. And now we have all the information in this formula for fluid over time that we need. 100 times 60 divided by 10 will give us our milliliters per hour. Have you paused and calculated for yourself? If you did, you'll find that it's 600 milliliters per hour, and you're going to program your pump to do 600 milliliters per hour, and in the volume, volume to be infused is 100 milliliters. So 600 milliliters per hour, 100 milliliters go by, and that is going to be a 10 minute infusion, and then you have given your loading dose of four grams in 10 minutes. Once we've given those four grams in 10 minutes, the next challenge is to come up with our maintenance dose for two grams per hour, and this is even easier. Let's clear the board. Here's the second standard formula. Again, I hope you have it written down on a reference card that you carry with you in the ambulance. And here's the formula. Dose per minute times 60 to convert to hours divided by concentration will get your milliliters per hour. But hold on. The dose here is expressed in grams per hour. So we don't even need to worry about any of this. The dose is already 2 grams per hour. So you got your top number, and your concentration is 0 0.04. So 2 divided by 0 0.04 will get you 50 milliliters per hour. So our loading dose, 4 grams in 10 minutes. We did all the math, and we've already given 100 milliliters at 600 milliliters per hour. And that took 10 minutes. And our maintenance dose, which is 2 grams per hour, 2 divided by concentration gives you 50 milliliters per hour. So we just switch our pump to 50 milliliters per hour for the remainder of the transport. 
And that's all there is to it. Just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of willingness to write things down and do this once in a while on your own, play with the numbers, and you'll get much, much more comfortable over time and you'll have more confidence.